you know, I, I'm from Maryland. I'm only four hours up the road. I mean, you're 24 hours, like at least takes you takes you that long to get home. So what was like a biggest stereotype that like didn't hold true? Didn't hold true? Yeah. How real are we meant to be here? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to talk about your position really quickly if we're talking about the mental side to the game because I think one of the hardest things for being a kicker is say you have four field goals in a game and you could hit three that were from like 50 plus and you're like God's gift to the earth. And then the last one, say, is a game winner and it's from like 40 and say you just miss it. That's in our eyes, if you, were, if you took out the situation of the game, that's a good day pretty much. You, you hit three yeah, 50 plus yard field goals. It's really tough. And yeah. I guess Koshiba has talked talk to me a lot about this too. And it's just people remember you for the, for the last kick. Like yeah. it's kind of that last memory that they have in your mind. And so it's tough. It's, I mean, it, at the end of the day, you can't really get extremely down on yourself. It's kind of trying to stay at that even level. No, for sure. And, like even if one day doesn't go your your way, yeah. uh, you got to kind of move on to the next and not get too down on yourself and ready to go out there and perform the next time because you know that that last kick was just as important as the next kick. Personally, in my opinion, I'm not sure because I'm not a kicker, but I do think that being a kicker would be a little bit more mentally challenging than being a punter just because there's a little bit of leeway with a punt. You don't necessarily have to hit it perfectly to hit a good ball. And even if you don't hit a good ball, it's still not a disaster usually. And I just think that like towards the back end of the game, you're putting points on the board. I'm, I'm giving them the ball, but in the position we want, essentially. Right. So I think there is a little bit more pressure on you as a kicker. Um, even I, Actually, one of the more like pressure situations I have is holding. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like in like the UVA game uh, two years ago now, um, holding for you and... Um, I remember looking back at you and thinking like, wow, this is a big situation. <laughs> like, yeah. I hope he's ready. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the more mentally challenging positions, not because of what we have to do, but the context in which we have to do it. Rapper kneels on the hash mark at the 44. Snap is good, place down. Johnson sends it away and it is good. Johnson turns it in from 55 yards out. That's his first career 50 plus yard field goal. And it comes from nearly midfield. A hard hat mentality for us is different from most people. I think a hard hat mentality for us is proving to the coaches, the players and our peers that we respect and that respect us is that we're not just specialists. We're, yeah. We're guys that work hard on the team and we're guys that like strive to make progress in the weight room and on the field and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, it's almost like a getting a hard hat for a specialist, in my opinion, is like a statement. It's almost like, hey, like I'm a specialist, but I work just as hard as you guys, mostly. Yeah. I mean, there's some guys that are just insane, but I work just as hard and try just as hard and probably don't lift as much, but the effort's there. Yeah. I think that's kind of like, I think that's one of the like the selling points for me on getting a hard hat. And I guess for me, like my biggest thing is when I came in, kind of the stage was set because you know we had some bulls in the yeah. in the specialist room: Mitchell Ludwig, yeah. Joey Sly, Colton Taylor. Yeah, <laughs> they are all yoked up. Yeah, and then I come in, you know, my like. 165 body frame as a yeah. freshman. I've been like, rocking a dad bod yeah, since sc- like freshman year, but just trying my yeah, best. Yeah, skinnier than a twig. I was like, all right, like I kind of had to step it up and kind of that's been my mentality since I've been here is kind of proving people that, you know, I can hold my own like with the rest of these like freak athletes, you know. I'd, yeah. I'm not, yeah, 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 exactly. You know, you're like, you're power cleaning next to like Wyatt Teller back in like 2017. You're yeah. Like, I got a long way to go. But exactly, anyway, exactly. Yeah. But I think it's more just a statement of like being more than just a specialist. Right. Being being like more of a well-equipped athlete. Yeah, it's proving yourself to the coaches, to the uh, to the rest of the players that yeah, exactly. I know you're you're devoted to this program, not only in during games but in the off season during workouts. Kind of a point that we've made since we've been here, and that we're trying to set for the guys to follow is that yeah exactly is bring up those guys yeah. underneath us and make it sure they really the make same sure way. that i don't know you don't slack in the weight room you don't slack during conditioning you yeah. hold your own and push like you don't just hold your own but you push the rest of the players to be better too yeah you know? exactly beat some beat some linebacker in a 
line touch or something. And Which I can't do. Yeah. You can, but I can't. Yeah, yeah, it'll push them a little harder because yeah. no one wants to get beat by a kicker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm from Maryland. I'm only four hours up the road. I mean, you're 24 hours, like, at least takes you, takes you that long to get home. <laughs> well, that was the thing. As soon as I landed in Roanoke, which I thought was Blacksburg at the time, it was snowing. And I walked outside and I had no idea what it was. And I was like, well, I know this is snow. Yeah. But, like, I didn't know the texture of it or anything like that. Because right. I'd never really seen snow before that. You didn't know when it just, like, touches your hand yeah, and exactly. it'll melt. <laughs> I didn't realize that, like, it was completely soft and that if you try to step in it, you'd fall through. So, like, I had no idea about any of that. What was, like, a biggest stereotype that, like, didn't hold true? Didn't hold true? Yeah. Ooh, the one that, mm, let me think. One that didn't hold true. That we don't all have southern accents. Well, yeah, there's that. <laughs> but you see, like, western movies and stuff, and they're always based in, like, New York or L.A., so you always think things are, like, high-paced and intense and that oh, everybody's yeah. rude and stuff. Especially in Blacksburg. Oh, yeah, no you get one the is rude. No one is rude. Everyone's so welcoming and, like, very friendly and stuff. And I think that was, like, one of the things I was kind of surprised by. I was, like, you know, I'd go and, like, order food or something, and the people are so nice to me. I'm, like, okay, well, it's kind of like I'm back home. Yeah, you're yeah. not really going to hit any traffic unless it's game day or something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Good, good, good. Here we go, Inch. Here we go. Let's go, Breon. Here we go, outside chap. Good, 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 good. Run, chap. Run. It's a good. Nice job. Run, Breon. You got to run. It, yeah, tackle. You got to run. It does us no good unless you play fast. No good. Here we go, Waller. Go play it. Let's well, go. I think, like, the main thing that a lot of people don't see that he does is the formations that are around us and like our alignment and our assignment. So like a lot of the time we'll do something like a directional kick that a lot of, not a lot of people know about. So like Sam going end over end directional right. And he knows the formations and stuff. And he knows like what's happening the whole time and my position on the shield. Whereas a lot of people might just say, oh, good kick. He knows that, oh, my op time might have been a bit slow, my operation time might have been a bit slow, or my alignment might have been a bit off. And so, even if I do have a good kick, it gets fair caught, it goes like, say, oh, it's 45, like, what a mm -hmm. good day. <laughs> and I'm coming off and he's just barking down my ear. Not a, like, my dad called me once, he was like, why is he mad at you? And I was like, because I didn't do my job. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what do you mean? It was like, well, I was a little bit slow and they ran a block look and it was close to being blocked. And my dad didn't really understand that because he was like, oh, it's a good punt. But I was like, no, there's this. He's trying to avoid a disaster the whole time. And he's trying to have the most effective punt that we can have. Yeah, I guess for me, it's like during practice throughout the week, like when we do field goals and everything, he challenges me to be perfect yeah. no matter what. And, and when we say perfect, it's not just making the kick. It's hitting the ball through the middle at the right op time and getting like the right height and trajectory on the ball. Yeah. And so he's pretty harsh on me, I guess, during the week about making sure I hit the middle. And so, like, during game days and stuff, yeah, like, I, I might, like, squeak one in and to the fans, like, yeah, that's, like, made the kick, that's awesome. But yeah. in the end, like, he really tries to keep me accountable and make me personally accountable for being perfect every time and hitting that uh, middle spot through the uprights pretty much every time. One thing that he does, which is kind of cool, which isn't very like his personality, yeah, is he's, I, he's pretty reserved during games. Unless something's really wrong and he needs to tell you about it, whether it's a good or a bad ball, he'll tell you to move on to the next and he'll tell you to keep your composure. So that's another thing that just a regular fan wouldn't really understand. Yeah, I didn't really realize that until I actually started getting some playing time. Yeah. Like, kind of, for the most part, he leaves you alone a little bit, like, because, I mean, we're in a different position than a lot of other uh, players on the team you know yeah. it's, we really go out there we get maybe a couple tries a game yeah and so it's kind of moving on to the next one even if the last one wasn't didn't go how you wanted to all right let's say we're doing like Sydney to the Gold Coast from my mom's place to my dad's place and we're driving up and it's you me and coach she best and let's say we we're in a van or something how, how long are we driving is that 11 hours Oof. it's gonna take a while what are we gonna do with sheaves do you know what like what music is his go-to? I've heard him. One of his favorite well, songs was Imagine heard, Dragons. Yeah, <laughs> it's Imagine the one Dragons that he sings and like. Games. I mean, he'll definitely be wanting to play Uno or something on the way up. Yeah. <laughs> Slap it on the dashboard. Yeah. No. We'll 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 hire a driver. We'll be playing Uno in the back. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll try and keep him entertained. I don't know how we're gonna do that. Yeah. <laughs>